Hello everyone, oh, in this video I'm going to show basic concept of how to access uh, switch, Cisco switch remotely for the purpose of management. So this is a very simple diagram and I have one uh, computer station that I'm using I'm using to access the switch remotely using Telnet or Secure Shell but maybe but mainly I'm going to uh, research my cell phone using uh, Telnet protocol. So now I look at this computer, it has the following IP address 192.168.0.1 the uh, subnet mask, this is a class C basically, so default subnet mask is uh, slash 24. This is default gateway here, fast Ethernet 00 of router RT. And router RT has a second interface, fast Ethernet 01, connected to switch SW2. Now, uh, in order to access a switch, of course, switch is just a box which is used to connect devices to uh, implement a local area network, but uh, it has also layer 2 protocols, it has very advanced features basically. Uh, for configuration, but we're not going to go into that. We're just simply going to see how to access a switch remotely. Now, a switch does a switch has an IP address. Now, the question that we might ask at which layer switch does does a switch operate? Well, it's obvious switch operates uh, operates at layer two, okay, at layer two. All, and there are protocols at layer two, like spanning tree protocols, like trinking protocols, uh, like uh, protocols uh, uh, DTP, VTP and uh, other routing protocols. So configuration of switch is a little bit very uh, complex. It can reach some degree of complexity, like a router. However, we're going to see how to access the switch remotely. No need to go to the switch and connect to it through the console. Now we won't, would like to connect to the switch through the Telnet port or the Telnet uh, line, using Telnet line. So since the switch is layer two device, of course, I'm not referring to layer three switches and multiple layer switch, etc. So this is outside the scope of my talk. Since the switch we consider it as layer 2 device, uh, where does, does it need necessary to have an IP address? No, but it, it will have an IP address, but when it has an IP address, this IP address is simply used for remote access, that's all. So for example, now I'm going to go to the Cisco switch SW1, and we know by default that all ports in the switch, all the ports uh, belong to... Uh, VLAN 1, so now so VLAN brief, you see all the ports belong to VLAN 1. So what I do, I'm going to configure a VLAN interface. So by default, if you look at the configuration, there is VLAN interface 1, interface for VLAN 1, and it's always shut down. So I can do the following. I can say, okay, I'm going to create, let's say, another VLAN, or I can use VLAN 1, no, no problem, but in uh, in uh, in real case, real situation, you have to create another VLAN for remote access. I will use VLAN one. Now, once I access VLAN one, interface VLAN one, I will assign to it an IP address. The IP address to be assigned is 192.168.0.100, and here I am, 192.168.0.100, and I have to specify the subnet mask. Of course, I'm not done because I have to bring this interface up. So once the interface is brought up, now it's okay, I configured, I assigned an IP address to the switch. I will use this IP address only for remote access, for remote access, of course, for the purpose of management. Now, is the switch ready for being for uh, remote access? No, because I have to go to the line uh, VTY04. And here I can say, okay, I can give it a password that says Cisco, login, and here I am now, the switch is ready for remote access. Now, from my computer, uh, what I will do, I'm going to start the command prompt. I turn that to the 192.168.0.100. All right, you see, now the Telnet is there. And I have to uh, to type the password Cisco. And here we are. So I access this with. Of course, I can always go back and provide the enable secret, let's say, or let's say enable password. Let's make a class. This will be the password class. And once I'm done, I go, oh sorry, once I'm done, I go back to my uh, machine, exit, I turn that, you see, I type Cisco for remote access, and then the enable password, which is class, and here I am, so I can see the uh, configuration, I can do whatever I want with the switch, provided I don't change the IP address that I'm using for remote access. So things are okay for accessing my local switch or the switch to, to which I'm connected physically or 
switch which is on the same LAN, in the same LAN to uh, where my computer is connected. Uh, of course, here we have to look at the IP address. Now, what about accessing switch SW2? Okay, let's do the same thing. I will go to switch SW2. And what I do, I'm going to configure this VLAN. Uh, I'm going to use VLAN 2, sorry, this is VLAN 2 on the same switch, switch uh, SW2. I will configure first, let's see, show VLAN brief, and all ports belong to VLAN 1. And when you see the configuration, you see that interface VLAN 1 is there by default and it's shut down. So I'm going to access interface VLAN 1. I give it IP address 192.168.1.100. Subnet mask will be 255.255.255.0 and bring the interface up. Okay, now what I do, I'm going to type enable password and give it class password. Okay, for accessing the privilege exec mode remotely. I need to go to the line VTY, line VTY 0 to 4, and give a password. Let's say password is uh, Cisco, for example, and login. Here I am. Okay, I save my uh, configuration. Okay, I can always change the host name because I did not change the host name so that we don't get confused with switch we are accessing. I will do the same thing here. All right, so now I go to management computer and from my management computer, I will, I will do this. I'm going to turn that but to the uh, VLAN 1 interface of switch 2. Look what happens, you see, it doesn't work. Although I configured VLAN interface 1 on switch SW2, I configured the IP address of VLAN interface, VLAN 1 interface, I configured the switch SW2 to support Tenant access through the VTY lines, but it didn't work it, and it doesn't work actually. Why it doesn't work? Because switch SW2 is on a different LAN. You see, it is on a different LAN. It's beyond the router with respect to me, it's beyond the router. So in order for me to be able to communicate with the switch SW2, I know how to reach it. But switch SW2 doesn't know how to reply back to me. So in order for the switch to do that, I have to configure the default gateway. Uh, I go back default gateway such that whenever the switch SW2 needs to communicate with a host on a different network, it will use this interface of router RT as a default gateway. So I have again to I, ha I have to go to switch SW2 to configure IP default gateway and I will provide the IP address 192.168.1.250, right? So this is the IP address that I'm using here. Right. Here I am. Now, I successfully, I succeeded in, in telling my, my switch, look, if you want to communicate with a device which is on a different network, use a default, your default gateway, which is the interface of router RT which, to which you are physically connected. This is your default gateway. Now, let's observe. For management station, I turn that to switch 192. You see, now I'm accessing. I should type Cisco, enable the class, and here I am. Okay, this is SW2. SW2, this is to show you that I was I successfully, uh, I was successfully able to access the switch SW2. Of course, now, while you are in switch SW2, of course, I, I don't need this anymore now. Uh, I don't need to access directly. I access only through the Tenet uh, application. Now, from switch SW2, you can always Tenet to the switch, the first switch, SW1, by using its IP address, 192.168.0.100. You see, why now it doesn't work? Why it doesn't work? Also, it doesn't work because switch SW2 does not know how to reply to SW2 because it has not been configured with a default gateway. So I go to switch SW1 or I do it through the management station. No need to do something like that now. Uh, I can always access through, okay, Cisco, enable class. All right, and here, I'm going to type IP default gateway 192.168.0.250. This is the default gateway for switch SW1. Once I have done that, okay, I save. Now what I do, I'm going to exit from switch SW1. I'm going to turn that to switch SW2. Right, password. I am now, I, I have 
I'm accessing switch SW2, which is a remote switch, basically using the Ethernet application from switch SW2. I can simply turn nuts to the switch SW1. I, I don't have to type the command turn nuts. When you are on the router, iOS allows you to just specify the IP address and it understands that you are terminating to the switch. And you see now I can type the password, enable class password, and here I am. So I am in switch SW1. Now, if I want to move back to switch SW2, I just press Control Shift 6. Uh, uh, right. Control Shift. Okay, it looks like it doesn't work here. It's okay. So I can go back again and and uh, exit to switch SW2. Okay, so thank you for viewing this video. See you next time.